Grace and peace to you as we gather for worship this morning on the fourth Sunday of Advent. I'm Reverend Diane Rue, pleased to serve the Congregation of St. Paul's United Methodist Church here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We have a special treat for you today as our worship service will be led by our children this morning. And what a fantastic job they have done in telling the story of Christmas. I know that you will be blessed. But first, a couple of announcements. If you have not yet gotten a video or an email message in uh, for our video Christmas greeting to one another and you want to do so, please do so today uh, so we can put all of that together and get that out to you this week. Also, here is our schedule of services for this week. On Wednesday, we will be providing an online children's Christmas Eve service so that you might access that whenever you and your children, families are celebrating this year. It's a brief service with a lighting of our Christ candles, some music, and a special story uh, for that night for our children. On Thursday, Christmas Eve, we will provide our online service of music and prayers and preaching and liturgical dance. We'll likely post that late afternoon on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Day itself, we will provide music for your Christmas. And then on Sunday, our morning worship service will include as well lots of Christmas music provided by the musicians of your St. Paul Church family. And remember, all of our worship services, once they are posted, can be accessed at any time through our website at www.stpaulsumcgb.com. And in addition, on Christmas Eve itself, those who wish to brave the cold are invited to join me for a brief candlelight service in our uh, memory garden outside at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Wear a face covering and dress warm as we gather safely distanced to share the light of Christ on Christmas Eve. Please call or email the office to let us know if you plan to attend that service. And finally, <clears throat> I want to share some joys and concerns today that you might hold these people in your prayers today and in this week to come. And there are a number. Um, ask that you would pray for Marianne Keller, who's been diagnosed with COVID. She's having some significant discomfort. Prayers for her and for her caregiver, Joanne. Colleen Kendall's mom is really struggling with COVID in a nursing home in Iowa. And prayers for Colleen and Paul as well, who have been diagnosed with COVID. Paul's doing pretty well at this point, but um, Colleen is struggling. Fred Monroe asks for continued prayers as he's recovering from his heart surgery. He had a couple of setbacks this week. But it will be a long process of healing for him, and uh, that was expected, that he really appreciates uh, your continued prayers. Continue to pray for Lori Verbort, who's had a, a rough week and uh, does have another upcoming chemo treatment uh, soon, so keep her in your prayers. Phyllis Swim um, has asked for prayers. She's uh, now in hospice, uh, but she fell this week. Um, and is doing okay, but that has made things even more difficult. So prayers for Phyllis and for her family seeking to care for her. Don Zeidmolder had knee replacement surgery this past week, and everything went well, and he's doing well. Tom and Wanda Matichewski's daughter-in-law, Megan, is having some health concerns following the birth of her uh, son, their son, on Friday. Uh, the 4th of December, and she's still continuing to have some concerns, so pray for their family. Arlene Finland is home from hospital, um, and her confusion is uh, much better, but will be facing a major surgery uh, for an infection that is scheduled at this time for January 5th. Julie Borowitz was recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and asks for your prayers as she begins treatment. 
Becky Engebretson's grandfather was recently diagnosed with COVID and he has been placed in hospice care. Prayers for Mark and Lynn Burnt as Mark lost an aunt and an extended family member due to complications of COVID this last week. Prayers for Lonnie Schmidt as he has been having health issues and asks for prayers. Prayers for uh, Reginald and Jean Doxeter's great granddaughter as she is at Children's Hospital right now in St. Louis awaiting a lung transplant. And a couple of joys to share, Joe and Mina Springer had a baby boy this uh, last fall. We did not know of that, but we know of that now. And so we celebrate his birth, um, his name, Noland Shepherd. And uh, Reverend Jim Kellerman recently celebrated a birthday. I believe it was this, his 70th. And so we want to uh, wish him well in this new year. So let us now join together in the lighting of our fourth Advent candle, and then we will take a journey to Bethlehem together. I'm Warren Clark, and this is my grandson Dawson, my wife Lynn, and my granddaughter Jessa Lynn. Today we continue lighting our candles of Advent. We use this light to help us prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of Christ into our lives and into our world at Christmas. At this time, we ask you to gather around your candles as we light them together. We begin today with the memory verse that we have been learning together. Please say it with me. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Today we relight the first three candles of Advent. The candle of hope, peace, and joy. Today we will light the fourth candle of Advent. Jesus demonstrated self-giving love throughout his ministry. Advent is a time for kindness, thinking of others, and sharing with others. It is a time to love as God has loved us by giving us the gift of Jesus. Let us light the fourth candle of love. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And now, let us pray. Great God of love and light, we thank you now for the light of that special star over 2,000 years ago that guided humble shepherds and learned wise men to the holy babe. Lead us now by the light of your love, that we may all that we also may follow you to the new life in him in celebration of the birthday of our king and our savior jesus christ we pray amen, amen. amen.
friends, it is final time to draw close to the mystery of Christmas as we prepare to enter this great mystery. We are all on our way to Bethlehem. Let's go with the prophets, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, Samuel, the angels, the magi, and all the rest. They will show us the way on this journey. That was not just way back then, but is also a journey we all can take today. Thanks for traveling with us. Long before the birth of Jesus, prophets foretold a wonderful event, the coming of a Prince of Peace, who would be the Son of God and who would bring hope to all the world. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For a child has been born from, for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and up. Hold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. Many years passed before the words of the prophets were fulfilled. Then to a simple maiden in the town of Nazareth came the greatest honor and glory yet bestowed upon a woman. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent and by God to a town in Galilee he called Nazareth to a maiden engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The maiden's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and he will be named Jesus. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is sent to be barren. For nothing is impossible with God. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The angel departed from her.
The first Christmas over 2,000 years ago was a seemingly unimportant event, the birth of a child in a lonely manger in Bethlehem. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered, and all went to their own towns to be enrolled. And Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. There was no place for them in the inn in Bethlehem. And now they had their baby Jesus. And so it was that she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. Among the few who first heard of the birth of the Christ child were some humble shepherds in the hills near Bethlehem. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels left, 
The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing. And see this thing that has taken place. That has taken place. Which the Lord, which the Lord has made known to us. Has made known to us. So they left quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Poor shepherds were not the only worshippers at the cradle in Bethlehem. Strange visitors also came bearing fine gifts. Those gifts for me? No, we're for the king of kings. Oh. Magi followed the star in search of the king of kings that had been in the prophecy when they came upon King Herod. We are searching for the king of kings following that star. Find him. When you do, report back to me. Okay. So the wise men left, but they were suspicious as to King Herod's motives. Little did they know they were correct. <laughs> Soon I will find that king of kings. Finally, the star stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. They knelt before the Holy Family and offered the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Welcome to the world, baby Jesus. When the shepherds, the magi, and everyone who came to greet the little king returned to their homes, they joined with the angels in glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. As we celebrate Christmas this year, may we too go on our way with praise and wonder in our hearts, given Glory to God for the gift of love given to us in Christ. Blessed Christmas to all. Amen. While shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold 
The shepherd feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Down in a lowly manger, our humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. the mountain o'er the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ was born